Hey guys, welcome to Tech UX. It's Mo back again with another video, and today's video is gonna be about a few things that I do not like about the Google Pixel 4a 5G. And if you guys see my last video, you will know I love this device for $450. The amount of things that the device gets right is quite a few, but no device is perfect. So we're gonna get into some of the negatives uh, about this device and some of the things maybe Google can improve on the next iteration. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I believe Google can get right with this device right over here is gonna be an IP rating, an official IP rating. So the Google Pixel 4a 5G does not have an IP rating, and for those who don't know what an IP rating is, it's pretty much a rating that a manufacturer gives the phone to see how much it can sustain when it comes to water and dust resistance. So the I, let's say, for example, the iPhone SE second generation has an IP67 water and dust resistant so meaning that it can withstand about a certain amount of meters of water and dust and that gives you a sense of how much the phone can sustain on a normal day to day. Um, I just feel like it's very important because I'm someone who likes to know how much my device can sustain so I know what sort of environments to be in with it or how comfortable or how much more careful I have to be depending on certain environments and with the Pixel 4a 5G unfortunately you do not get to know that so you have to really take it on the way and it's also good for like manufacturing warranties because if the manufacturer said the device is rated in IP67 and then for some reason in IP67 condition your phone uh, dies or gets to suffer some sort of damage the manufacturer is more inclined to replace the device but without that rating it becomes a, like you know kind of like a flip of a coin it depends on the manufacturer's whim whether they want to cover it or not and the second thing I don't like about the device is no wireless charging so I am someone who is a quick adapter of technology so whenever there's a new technology standard and it's really polished and it works really well, I'm someone who goes all in on it. And so, for example, I'm all in on wireless charging and wireless headphones and things like that. So a lot of the chargers in my house and in my office are all wireless chargers. So now that being I have this device as my secondary device and it has no wireless charging, I always have to make sure I have a type C cable with me. The good thing is that type C is a universal cable and I pretty much have a lot of them around me, but I'm so used to wireless charging, just putting my phone down or putting it up on a wireless charger and just expecting it to work well and wireless charging does have its negatives because it does deteriorate the battery a little bit faster so you could see it's like okay they can see why they got rid of that but as someone again who's a quick adapter of technology i just wish they had wireless charging on the devices because it's just more convenient and it's a lot less seamless i don't have to worry about cables i don't have to worry about a power brick i can just put on a wireless charger let it top up and then go about my business and the third thing I do not like about this device is the haptic motor that is inside. So the haptic motor in this device is mediocre at best like uh literally i turned it off for pretty much everything besides phone calls and text messages so i turned off the haptic motor for typing for swiping for any sort of gesture control it just feels very cheap in a way and it feels very tinted so i guess it's like one of those things that they omitted to really polish just because you know it does drive down the cost and again this is a very cheap device for everything else that it offers but the haptic motor is just very bad and so i just like turned it off for pretty much everything i hope they improve it and just make it better uh, in the next device so i like to compare this device a lot to the iphone se second generation just because they are around that same price range and that the haptic engine in that device is phenomenal it works well it feels good it doesn't feel like really tinty or really cheap like this one when i'm like typing on it or swiping with the haptic feedback the vibration just feels really off and sometimes it's actually delayed and so you get uh like backup vibrations on the device and which can probably confuse you like depending on what you're doing exactly but yeah haptic motor in this device definitely needs to be improved in the next iteration and also the next thing about this device that i'm not too fond of is going to be the speakers so the speakers are not bad per se, but they are very weak. And when you do max them out to like their max volume, it kind of just like you feel the vibration of the speakers all behind the back plastic back. So I don't know if that's because the back is plastic and it just like trembles when you're listen when you're listening to content on the speaker and putting it out loud. But it's it just it's not that great to be honest. Because if you have it on the medium level, it sounds really low. You max it out, then you get this weird vibration feeling, and it just it still doesn't even sound right. If for some reason it sounds like the bottom speaker sounds a lot more fuller than the 
top speaker so it's not like evenly balanced so i feel like they should definitely take a uh into consideration improving the speaker qualities when it comes to devices in the next iteration and the final thing this is more of me nitpicking because this device is so good it's really hard for me to find things that i really dislike about the device besides the things i just mentioned right now so this one is more of a nitpicky thing for me uh it's pretty much the bottom and then the rest of the bezels around the device so the bottom bezel on the device is a slight bit thicker than the rest of the device so it gives you like this weird thing like when you're holding it in landscape mode where it looks like all the content is shifted shifted to the left because of that bottom bezel being a bit thicker and this is an oled display so a google really wanted they could have shrunk the bottom bezel a little bit more and pretty much gotten it to be more symmetrical but again that technology does cost a lot of money to actually have oled bend on the bottom so i can see why they would omit it again for a, a, such a cheaper device and not too many people care about it this, again this is just me nitpicking at this point but it's just one of those things where like you know it's like a little pet peeve of mine so it's one of those things where i feel like they definitely could do if they really wanted to and if more people cared about it so hopefully someone in google sees this video and cares enough to like you know make it more symmetrical and just uh, make it a little bit more pleasing to watch things on and uh, to game on as well all right guys thanks a lot for watching the video i really appreciate it please hit the subscribe button the like button and share the video if you got anything out of it hopefully see you in my next one guys peace out